Hello, my name is Martin. Martin Eisenberg. I'm the CEO of Rapid Lasso GmbH, and I'll be talking about a little environmental science project I've been doing here in Samara. It's a small surf community in Costa Rica on the Pacific Ocean. Um, this is very unusual. Everything is unusual this year. I didn't expect to still be here. Um, this is me. Hello. I look a little different now, and it's not an Instagram filter. I look a bit like a farmer. Yeah, that's what I do. I also am here in a room in my house. I spend a lot of time a little holed up. Why? Oh, because the mafia tries to kill me. But that's another story and we're not talking about this right now. So, this environmental science project uh, was planned quite a while ago. Some background. I used to work in a nuclear weapons lab 10 years ago, 13 years ago. And that was a landmine detection project and I was a LIDAR guy. Um, but really, urban farming was always kind of my thing. I wanted to be an urban farmer uh, or farmer or I liked nature. I wanted to do something that improves the planet. So I started this urban farm, did a lot of farming in Livermore, California and biking distance to this lab. And then I bought one day this house, a beautiful Queen Anne Victorian right in downtown. And I asked the lab, let us make a laser farm a laser farm, the hippest urban farm ever and bring in military grade technology. In this backyard I wanted to create the hippest urban farm that America had ever seen using lasers. So I was inspired by this Radiohead video that used a Velodyne scanner and I announced these plans after they were rejected at the labs at the Silicon Valley conference, have chicken need lasers, I introduced the concept of slow bombing and of laser chickens and those concepts are quite relevant until today. The problem is if you mess with a nuclear weapons lab that is um, known for the biggest laser in the world, sometimes there are some problems and problems are fallout. Well, one fallout is if you Google laser chickens on Google Images today, you will read something about the U.S. nuclear weapons lab and that gives you funny pictures. The other fallout was that I ended up being falsely accused of ridiculous charges, jailed, uh, put on ice hold and eventually deported and banned from the U.S. But that turned out to be something good. It was quite painful at the time. So I came back to Germany and had to come up with plan B. So first thing I had to turn things around and founded a company with help of the European Space Agency uh, seed program. And then I very quickly, and that was a very good move, this LiDAR compressor really helped me out to very early on get some traction in the market. So I started conferencing, I started more serious conferencing, I was even interviewed, and then it looked like I was just gonna be a regular company like anybody else, but whom was I kidding? The idea for my company was more like that. I wanted to become a rogue scientist who travels the world, does excellent science and has a lot of fun along the way and saves the planet somehow. So then many years kept, many years happened and I ended up in this beautiful location. What you see here is Samara, the Samara Bay. It's an aerial shot and my house is somewhere in there. Uh, this is my hammock where I take some rests. This is my surfboard with which I spend a lot of time out there paddling to that little island you see in the back and of course there's always my coffee mug. Uh, I have a very humble house, the house that I bought first and uh, then I started some little environmental projects like changing to s paper straws. Instead of plastic straws, you know, that get stuck up in turtle's noses, I said, hey, let's do paper straws. And that paper straw thing was quite popular. And it was also an easy way of making some science projects. You know, I got these paper straws, then I got a lot of paper straws. I'm really a paper straw man at this m moment. And uh, it was well received. And I did some experiments. How do the paper straws compare to other um, other straws, regular plastic straws and so-called eco-plastic straws. And here you see in that, in that bucket in the background, um, yes, you nicely see, as expected, the paper straws were gone, like after six weeks or nine weeks, they were completely disappeared. But these other eco straws and the regular plastic straws, they didn't really go away very fast. So, other things happened, like people sometimes say, oh my God, oh my God, somebody cut down a tree. And then I, you know, I like use a bit of geospatial technology. Okay, the tree is maybe here, is maybe here. So I go there, I have a look at the tree. Yes, indeed, it's a protected tree. Was it cut down with permissions and so on? And I thought, well, I should use my technology for this kind of stuff. So eventually I managed to get a guy with a drone or with a LiDAR system to come to my little surf town. And here we go, you know, in the middle of the night, start a little drone. 
and fly Samara. This is the Samara. It's a tiny village, three by three uh, blocks. There's a core downtown and then there's a business street. And mostly it's beach and, and beach restaurants and hotels. And uh, yeah, so here I have my first LiDAR scan of Samara done in March 2019 as sort of a baseline to experiment with. Uh, you notice that there is no street in the LiDAR data. That is because the street was just done freshly two weeks before that scan. And then I started using that data. For example, we had also a mobile truck run and in that truck run you see this almendra tree which is still there. Well, it turns out just weeks after the neighbor decided to remove this beautiful green fence and replace it with an ugly concrete wall. So already now I was able to document change you know, myself. I was able to document change and um, potentially make simulations on the increase in noise and, and the increase in heat because of this reduction of greenery and um, increase in, uh, in cement. And where, where is this located? Well, I'm here on the Guanacaste Peninsula. I'm zooming in here. Here we are. This is Samara Bay, beautiful place. And uh, this is a small town. And I am right now, right, right in this corner. This is where I'm right now located. Let's go in a little further. And so I bought one house here, then I bought a big piece of land here. And now just recently I bought another piece of land right here where the mouse is moving. Uh, because a new plan came. Uh, anyway, the original plan was to create some kind of environmental research lab in this wild, super downtown area and then invite scientists from the whole world to do little bio projects and train students and so on. It sounded like a great idea. And uh, it's a wonderful country. It's so biodiverse. Uh, there's, you know, um, here even uh, horses running around free everywhere so I I bought this piece of land 2800 square meters and instead of building a big hotel there I just decided to let the jungle grow and maybe one day put in this kind of sustainable little lab you know maybe a classroom and a coffee shop where we can uh, do science that actually saves the planet it's a nice nice lot it's big it's green and it's surrounded by walls, which makes it nice for GeoSlam algorithms. Here you see uh, us uh, pedestrian LiDAR, this uh, lot. You see even the murals on the wall show up in the intensity. Here's another mural. And the idea was then to bring in people and have little workshops. And maybe attach something to this gyrocopter, which is only two kilometers from here is the airport where you can have these gyrocopters fly. And I want to then take you out of the island, you know, like I did here with my sister and have fun uh, after all the work. But of course, then COVID came. Now that's just an old joke that doesn't fit you anymore. Then COVID came, so those cocktails on the beach have to wait. And instead, I will start again the plan that I had planned all along, namely that reality show that got me in trouble with the labs in the first place. So now let me show you very quickly what I'm up to these days. So this is my house, which is full of chicken poop right now, um, because I got a lot of chickens. When COVID hit, I immediately bought all these chickens, oh, and ducks, and here they all are. And my idea now is to do that laser farm with my own money, because, you know, last was made me a little bit rich. Yes, there's a lot of chickens everywhere here. Uh, so first I will start with here. Just webcams. So once these webcams are installed, there's one, two, well, they're actually installed. Once they are online, I will here, right where I usually swing in my hammock, I will create the urban farm. And also will bring in lasers. That's sort of the idea. You see these guys all want to be fed and they all want to be part of this video. It's a very beautiful lot and along this house I want to install lasers, maybe along these walls I want to install lasers and then transmit what I'm doing here, not with cameras, but with real-time geometry feeds, real-time geometry feeds to anywhere in the world. And on the other end, you will be able to, girls, please, daddy you gotta work. Uh, on the other end, you will then be able to feed those point clouds into any application. It could be a holographic display, it could just be a regular desktop, it could be Call of Duty, you know, a, a, a game where you can shoot up my chickens. Hey, don't worry, nobody's gonna get hurt. All virtually, of course. Here you see I'm already planting some banana trees. There's my compost pile. 
and then we could bring in more scanners and we could combine sensor fusion and I hope eventually some of you will visit me here. Ouch! I just got pecked in my foot. And uh, you know, some chickens are outside. The door is open so I let them run around and forage. That's sort of the new plan. That's the COVID-19 plan that got quickly put into action because I just thought this will last a while, this, uh, this crisis. And I don't see it as a crisis. I see it as an opportunity to do something really fun, something new, and use technology to bring nature and humans and animals somehow all into harmony. And yeah, slightly different presentations than usual. And I guess I'm taking questions now. I don't know how this is gonna work. All right, Martin Eisenberg from Rapid Lasso GmbH says bye-bye.